Thank you. Sorry. Um, so I was just going to introduce uh, ourselves as the core because Dr. Bhatia will go through all the potential uses for the Luminex technology. And so um, my name is Arturo Plett. I'm the manager at the core. Hailin Feng is next to me. And let's see if I can get her <laughs> to unblur. Um, there we go. And also Dr. Orshel is uh, the director of the core. And I was just gonna briefly go over our workflow and a few pointers there. Generally what happens first is you contact our core and we discuss the assay, you send us some forms with information and we are responsible to then run and process the, uh, all the samples, but you as the user would be responsible for uh, buying the kits and the reagents that come with the kits. We then process the samples, run it, and send you the results within 24 to 48 hours. I have a table on the right that uh, shows the prices that we have just for the processing. This does not include the price of the kit that is between the user and the vendor. And I would highly recommend you contact the vendors and get quotes as they like to give discounts, particularly to your first time users or if you have many plates to run. So again, I would recommend that you contact them with questions too about the assay and how to collect the samples. So um, this is just a quick slide showing how Hylin seamlessly integrates with the instruments and the results below that, that she gives to you. She's very skilled and very uh, an expert in all of this. And you can see our instrument with the obligatory cool blue LED light that is there for that function only. And below, I briefly listed our contact information, but your best bet is to, to Google Multiplex IAPUI, and that will get you to the core. It, it's sometimes easier to go that way than to try to go through the IU system to get to the core. So that is all I wanted to share with you, and I will turn it over to Dr. Bhatia to um, give you all the information about this technology. Uh, thank you uh, to Christy, to Arthur, and to, to Jill for uh, hosting uh, me today on behalf of Luminous Corporation. Um, my name is uh, Bobby Bhatti. I'm the regional business manager in the central region of the U.S. Uh, my primary job is to uh, work with um, a lot of the core facilities, a lot of researchers, other end users who are particularly interested in Luminex technology. Um, as a generalized uh, conversation and logistically speaking, if we have technical questions, I'm here for you. And my, my job is really it's just to help you find research solutions. Um, no question is a dumb question. It's just a matter of help, you know, getting you from point A to point B. Uh, I leave my information right here on the side right here. It'll be also in the end of the presentation. But if anyone needs to reach out to me, I would uh, kindly suggest to reach out to Arthur or Christy, and then they can also pass on on, on my contact uh, information. Uh, so today's talk is about complexity simplified and unleashing the power of XMAC technology. And I wanted to show you a simple Swiss army knife, but it's not simple, it can do a lot of things. And, you know, a funny story about myself is that, you know, when I was a little boy, I bought one of these Swiss army knives and it was only 10 bucks at the time. And uh, I was playing in my backyard, I, you know, I lived in Dallas and I was playing in my backyard and my neighbor's dog, who was a vicious, uh, vicious black dog, uh, got loose in the backyard next door and started barking and uh, started chasing uh, my brother and myself. So my brother and I, we, uh, we jumped into our backyard and the dog was barking outside of that fence. And we had no way of getting out. We, we were stuck with a bunch of bushes all around us. We couldn't know, figure out how to get on the other side. And then lo and behold, I remember that I had a Swiss army knife. And so I, I used you know, one of these um, uh, saw looking uh, knives right here and part of the Swiss army knife to cut several branches and then free myself and my brother out to go on the other side of the fence and go run in our house. And he wanted, you know, the reason I'm mentioning the Swiss Army knives is that you know, when you're working with certain types of technologies, um, you often find that you're limited to just being stuck with one, one type or one direction. And then the beautiful part about Luminex XMAC technology is that you have different options, you have different directions about where you wanna go as part of your research workflow. So I want to paint you a picture about, think about what your current technologies are, whether or not if it's Western blots, whether if it's ELISA's, or if it's flow cytometry, QPCR, so forth. And 
everything is great. There, everything is, is a gold standard. Everything is traditional and it takes you and gives you the answers of what you need. And these four representative figures um, are examples of tens of thousands of data sets that people have generated from running one plate from a Luminex kit. So for example, if someone was working with mice and they uh, were injecting mice with a certain type of drug or, or humanized cells, uh, and they wanted to find out a reaction after a certain amount of days, do certain inflammatory markers go up and down? How, are, how is the mice acting up and so forth? You collect, all, you collect that blood and you say, well, what, what can I go from there? But anyhow, and then you can see here that when you pull out, let's say serum or plasma samples, you run one single plate to look at an infl inflammatory markers and you can see what goes up and one, one goes down. So you get a beautiful bird's eye view. Or if you were working with other types of cell culture soups, uh, when if it's PBMCs or if it's epithelial cells and you treat with a drug, you also are looking what's going up and what's going down. And then, or if you're working with viral titers and you are um, looking to see how that virus, that those viral proteins are affecting um, healthy donor cells and you're looking at anything, one of its hormones, if it's inflammatory markers, if it's intracellular, so forth. And the whole point of the picture is, is that you don't have to be limited to just looking at one gene or one protein at a time um, in traditional assays. And that's the part of Lumex technology. So I'm going to give you a little, a brief overview of what the technology is. And, you know, midway in the talk, I can pause and then I'll be happy to answer some questions. But this is meant to be a two-way interactive seminar. So first things first is, what is XMAP technology and how does it compare versus traditional techniques? So XMAP stands for X is the unknown multi-analyte profiling. And so in comparison to say traditional uh, immunoassays such as ELISA's, um, I don't imagine anyone just doing 43 single ELISA's in a given moment, but collectively speaking, let's say that you are a researcher or you are a principal investigator and you have certain grad students or postdocs who spent over a month's time uh, doing um, a lot of plates to get a lot of data. And sometimes sensitivity could be an issue. Sometimes you just don't know, you know, there's plate to plate variability, but more importantly, how much sample are you burning? How much time that's being used to run a lot of single plex assays, traditional uh, immunoassays? The cost of plastic, the cost of reagents, everything is going up now these days. And so the part about Lumex technology is one plate, one set of reactions and a lot of data to, that it can give you for that. So versus a traditional ELISA's, less samples needed, less time, less expensive, and you can get more data out of this. And then more importantly is statistical power. We're gonna talk about this very briefly, but I think hopefully you can appreciate about the power of statistics in, in, in Luminex technologies. So Luminex has been around for roughly around 25 years. Um, it is part of um, a lot of research solutions in different uh, parts of the field, whether if it's academic researchers such as yourselves, but also local pharmas, your biotech companies, and then also animal health, very popular, very important in the Midwest. And we fit in, in a lot of research groups that even are doing vaccine development, drug discovery, biomarker discovery, and pathogen detections, along with a lot of the RUO related work. Uh, our assays are validated in, in different types of groups. So as I mentioned, other than animal health and, and plant biology, uh, we work with uh, groups that are uh, working with the government right now, certain Department of Health, uh, other pharma companies, public health and food safeties, so forth. So we're in different parts of, um, of the, the research fields, and we're not just limited to just one group, but more importantly, there's a lot of collaborations that take place and help them find re uh, solutions from, from bench side to bedside. So for you as a researcher, every project is unique. Everyone has different types of species, uh, whether or not it's human, mice, rats, uh, primates, or other types of animals. Uh, regarding sample types, serum plasma, cell culture soup, lysate homogenates, secreted fluids, and so forth, our kits, our partner kits, our beads that we're gonna talk about, works great with almost every sample type and almost every species type that you can imagine. So as we go forward into the next few slides, hopefully we can keep an open mind that 
uh, this is not just limited to just um, a certain group of researchers, but hopefully uh, a researcher such as yourself and where you can find that benefit from that. Regarding different types of applications, most of the researchers here probably that are attending today work with both secreted soluble proteins and intracellular proteins and immunogenicity. But also, we also have a lot of applications that can fall into things from histone protein modifications to epigenetics, as I mentioned, uh, all else with genotyping, gene expressions, and other types of molecular ser serological assays. As I mentioned before, Luminex was found uh, roughly around uh, 25, 30 years ago. And we have launched several instruments uh, that have um, uh, been going to different uh, research groups. Uh, as Arthur mentioned, he has the LX200. I'll talk about this briefly uh, later on today, but we have multiple different instruments. So if you see these floating around, the assays that we're talking about are uh, can be applied to a lot of these different instruments. So first with the core at the Mac, they have the Luminex 200. It is a flow-based system. It can, while this can do up to a uh, hundred different analytes to choose from. In theory, realistically, you can do up to an 80 plex, 80 different proteins, 80 different uh, genomic nucleic targets in one single sample. It has roughly around a 3.5 log scale and it can run a full plate in roughly around 45 minutes. We also have other instrument offerings, which is a FlexMap 3D. This can do a 96 and 384 wall plates. It's uh, a little bit faster than the LX200. It has a little broader range of 4.5 log scales, and you can get more throughput as you can do up to 500 different targets per sample well. And then just last year, we just launched the IntelliFlex system. The difference between uh, these two systems versus the one that the IntelliFlex is that while these have a Windows 10 PC that's hooked up to the, to the, to the right of the system, the IntelliFlex has no Windows or no external PC. The PC is embedded on the physical system itself. And this can do up to a 5.5 log scaling. And while it has similar speeds to a flex map, 500 uh, targets, it can do 96 and 3 or 4 well plates. This is a smaller footprint, a broader dynamic range, and it is a little bit robust regarding its laser strength. So if any have any questions, you guys can uh, reach out to myself or to Artur about this. But we are emerging. We are uh, creating new technology to make the, uh, make the brand better, especially that if you have worked with the kits in the past, and you've had good experiences or bad experiences, reach out to me privately or to Arthur, and we'll be happy to answer some of the questions that you may have in terms of your previous experiences. So the technology is all about the beads. These are polystyrene beads, and they're coated with a magnetic particle around it. So this is roughly around 6.5 microns. And the benefits, obviously, is that with multiplexing, this helps minimize background, high background levels, uh, more importantly, reducing um, anything from residual samples that could be sticky and could be uh, hanging behind that can all be washed away. And then more importantly, stronger binding affinity. If it's a protein related bead, a lot of the antibodies are carboxylated to those beads. I will talk more about what are these beads and how do they, how are they defined with the instrumentation? Uh, but also that you can also take nucleic targets and they can be hybridized uh, to, to your, to these beads and help detect nucleic target samples. So regarding the technology itself, the beads are multicolored into a red near infrared dye ratios. And I, as I mentioned before, the other instruments, we have up to 500 different bead region targets. In other words, flexibility. So if you have 20 nucleic targets you're interested in or 20 protein targets, every target has its own bead region or bead ID that goes to that bead and they're all mixed as a master mix. So for example, if you're working with cytokines and you're working with four different cytokines, when you work, purchase a kit, you'll get, let's say, for example, four cytokines and each of those have a color-coded bead that's connected to that. So if it's TNF alpha, you'll have dark red beads. If it's interleukin-1 beta, it'll be these type of red beads. If it's IL-6, these shade colored beads. If it's IL-9, it'll be light red beads. And all of these beads are then mixed up as a master mix and then dispense into a 96 or 3D4 wool format, where then you would proceed on with the traditional amino assay. Because it does up to 500 bead regions, I will say uniquely, and, and I'll mention this in the next couple of slides, is that when it comes to nucleic genomic applications, you will find that uh, a benefit of doing up to 500 different targets, depending on the instrumentation type. 
if it's a protein related uh, immunoassay, uh, one of the largest assays that, uh, that's available commercially is roughly around 65. These, uh, for the technology, for XMAP technology, this can be applied in different uh, applications. Most traditionally, it would be a, can a capture sandwich immunoassay, your traditional sandwich capture ELISA, but this is on beads instead of the antibody being coated on the well. So most of the applications that you're working on today is a capture sandwich. We do offer, and through a custom assay build, a competitive assay and serological assays. While COVID is still behind us, we do offer COVID uh, serology kits but also a lot of research uh, groups offer other types of indirect serological assays. From the genomic applications perspective, everything from microRNA DNAs to uh, SNPs, you can also have this on beads and then get your readouts. I'll talk about the data also in the next couple of slides to kind of paint you a picture of what we're working with here. So if you are dealing with capture sandwich ELISAs, for example, you're often working with either uh, cytokines, other types of immunology, inflammation assays, hormones, other types of isotypings, uh, IgG, IgA, if you're working with other disease markers, so forth, cell signaling. This is what your traditional uh, ELISAs are going to be, but on a Luminex platform, because we have the beads, it is carboxylated with a capture antibody that's ready to go for you. You incubate it with your sample, and then you're going to add a detection antibody followed by a strep avid antibody, and this gets the fluorescence readout. If it's a nucleic acid, let's say, for example, my, uh, we're talking about RNA, for example, what happens usually is that you can lyse the RNA from your sample, one if it's a paraffin embedded sample, uh, live cells, so forth, or tissue samples. And then when you homogenize it, uh, you're going to have the beads ready to go. And the beads already has a certain uh, target RNA DNA already bound to it. And so when you add it, it's then incubated overnight where the hybridization happens. In a branch DNA technology, it's going to be mixed up with amplifiers and also other types of pro molecules to that target. And then when this happens overnight, you're then going to add a uh, fluorescence for, uh, reporter and that this is going to generate the, the higher the signal is, the stronger that DNA and RNA is. The lower the signal is, the weaker it is. So the question you have to ask first is, how do I get started? Where do I need to go if I'm interested in this? And we're handling this delicately, so we don't ever want to rush anyone. It's the matter of where do I need to go? So first things first is we have four great Luminex trusted partners that have validated their assays on our instrumentations, those instrumentations that include what the MAC has. And so we have, while we have 70 plus partners of different groups who are doing HLAs and other types of um, uh, it, uh, IVD diagnostic applications. Regarding REUOs, where most of you probably work with, we have four trusted partners that I'm going to discuss with, and they have a breadth of applications from everything that you can think of from neurology to inflammation, cell signaling, endocrinology, toxicology, and so forth. And I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to leave this slide for like a quick minute or two. Uh, these are your four trusted partners that you will be uh, working with, depending on what company preference you have. These are four representatives. I left their information right here. Um, Arthur, do you want to just mention anything briefly about these four companies? Or um, as you mentioned before, the researcher is responsible for purchasing their own kit. Uh, you, as you mentioned, that they have to reach out to them and they, they can talk about how they want to design their assay, how they want to customize and build it. Did, did, you, did you want to comment on anything about the four companies? Sure. Uh, we have just to say that we have used kits from all four of these and they all work. They, some of them have slightly different setups, which allows you to run uh, fewer or maybe more samples per, per 96 well plate. But I can say that all the kits work as they were um, promised to do. So I think all four companies make a good product. Right. So th this is something to know that, you know, if you're working with um, collaborators or partners in your lab or other, you know, you're, you're going to find certain buzzwords, right? So for example, Millipore has Milliplex assays. Biotechnic doesn't have an actual physical brand name, but then they may say Luminex R&D. Biorad, you may hear the word Bioplex floating around. And then Thermos Fisher Scientific, you may hear Procarda Plex or Quantigene. Um, all four companies offer proteomic applications. So everything from 
uh, immunology inflammation to cell signaling to endocrinology and so forth. Uh, the, I would say that Thermo Fisher is probably the only company that offers genomic um, nucleic acid targets that are ready to go for you. There are other companies that does histone modifications uh, that you can also look into. Uh, but I would say that these are the four companies and they do custom design your assay. So if you have a, if you have a wish list of targets, don't hesitate to talk to that representative and say, I have a wish list. What can you do for me and put into a plate? Now, if they say to you, well, you can't put everything on a plate. They have to go split into multiple different plates. And the reason why is that at the end of my presentation, I'll show an example, but every company has panels. And in those panels, they have a list of targets that can go under a specific plate. That's because of a, a what they validated and optimi um, optimized based on sample dilution requirements, uh, sample detection ranges, uh, I would say uh, what, what minimizes uh, cross-reactivity issues and so forth. Their job is to make your life easier, not harder. If you find something questionable, uh, you know, feel free to either talk to me about it or more importantly, just understand that each of these four companies do not speak on behalf of the other companies. They should only speak behalf only for themselves. So always speak to the individual reps for their opinion about their own kits and hopefully you can get what you need at supply. You can also, I don't wanna talk about pricing per se in terms of who gives what percent discount, work with the rep and ask them how much does their kits cost and they can work out something with you, uh, especially from an academic perspective, they do have discounts. Here is a traditional protocol of how the assays work. You have a kit, it looks something like this, okay? Now, most of these companies will say, you don't need anything else other than the kit and your samples. They're 99% correct. Sometimes you may need, you know, deionized water, or you may need um, maybe a sodium chloride or something to that, and just or something that may neutralize, depending on your sample extraction and so forth. But all four companies have validated their assays to say all you just need is their kits and their samples. All four of these companies' kits do provide standards and kit QCs, and that's the beautiful part to help you understand: hey, do these assays work or do not work? How are the standard curve ranges and so forth? And that's the other thing too, I do wanna mention about all four of these companies is go visit their website. If you visit their website, they do have standard curve ranges. So especially if you have Eliza experience and you say, I had, you know, I don't know, um, 200 picograms per ml of leptin or 1000 picograms per ml of IL-6 using Eliza so forth. Am I gonna get the exact same numbers doing Luminex, XMAP technology? The answer is no. Um, you have to understand that what, when it comes to traditional amino assays, uh, they have each of those companies that you purchase analyzes from, they have their own unique standards. They have their own unique capture antibodies, their own unique uh, secondary antibodies. So, you know, their strep avidin and um, um, uh, biotinylated pan antibodies. Every company have validated their own unique standards and their own unique secondary antibodies based on the titers and what works and what doesn't. However, you should hopefully find that trends do stay the same. If you expect um, LPS treated, uh, sample and you're seeing cytokine stimulations, odds are you will find cytokines being stimulated by LPS running these assays. Are you going to find exactly five-fold difference between something and something? If you do a comparison, no. You might find that this may give you a tenfold difference. They may find a five-fold difference. This may be a 20-fold difference, so forth. So every company has their own um, validations. I do not recommend to anybody that if you are in a project and you're committed to a company's kit, that you change a company's kit mid-project and then you have you start getting results. Uh, you will find um, you know, some problems and that as you are trying to make a comparison between kits within a mid-project. So I would say that you know, try a kit before starting and committing to a project out. If it's just a one kit project and you say, I'm not doing any more you know, two months from now or a year from now, that's fine. Then you have a liberty to choose any of these companies. But if you are thinking that you have a thousand samples, 2000 samples, or this is a, a three year study based on a, on a grant that you were awarded, take the time to do your research, talk to the companies, talk to me or talk to the core I say, I'm interested in this. What is the best way about it? Where are, there are you know, tens, of, uh, tens of thousands of publications that people have done their work on using these four companies kits that can also you know, sway you into a certain direction. But traditionally, once you have a kit, you open up the box, 
And I know this is where the core comes into play, but I just want to paint you a picture about what the core generally does so you know about how much time it takes. The box is open, and usually 1 to 25 microliters of that sample, one of its serum plasma, cell culture soup, uh, lysates, uh, fluids, so forth, they are dispensed into the plate, and they're incubated with the premixed beads. And when I say by premixed beads, this is where the multiplexing come into play. If you're doing 20 cytokines, if you're doing 20 nucleic targets, so forth, they're mixed. They're premixed and they're dispensed into the plate, into each well. And then that one sample goes into that well that has all of the targets in there. And it's usually incubated. And it depends on the protocol. It could be two hours room temperature or overnight four degrees. And then because the beads are magnetic, what happens is that once the incubation is complete, in other words, that the antibody has been bound to your protein of interest from that sample, or that probe has been bound to your nucleic target, then what happens is you're going to, the plate's going to be washed three times with a magnetic plate washer. And then what happens is that you are retaining those magnetic beads that have pulled down your target of interest, throwing away, dispensing out any any excess junk, any supernate that's not relevant, that's not bound to that probe or to that antibody. Followed by a couple of uh, secondary antibody steps that takes roughly about an hour and a half. It's washed three times, is then resuspended in some type of sheath buffer or an assay buffer, and is put into the instrument that takes roughly about one hour or less for acquisition. Arthur and the Mac uh, group has an analysis software, and I'll show you an example of some of this. But what happens is that once the plate goes into the instrument, it flows in and then the lasers hit those bees in a single file, but in a rapid speed. And you will see that the red laser helps identify, ah, what is the target here? What's the cytokine? What's the nucleic target? And then the green laser hits that target, those beads, to get a certain signal. We call it median fluorescence intensity or MFIs. The higher the MFIs are, the stronger the signal is. The weaker the MFI signal is, the weaker the sample is for that protein or for that nucleic target. If it's a protein target, most kits are provided standards. So when the MFIs are collected from those, from each of the single wells, they're hit against the standard curve, and then you'll get a concentration spit out. So here you have the standard curves, <coughs> excuse me, of, of the concentration readings of each of the analytes. And then for your unknown samples, you'll get your concentration values. And then they can be put in some type of analysis software where you can flag outliers if, Maybe one sample was accidentally contaminated, or maybe you made a mistake about how you label that sample to say, oh, no, 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 this is not LPS treated for two hours. This was treated for 20 hours, so forth. Uh, the MAC group has an analysis software that helps uh, correct any outliers, and then therefore you get cleaner data and therefore lowering your sample CV percentages. In terms of resources, you can go on Luminex's website, luminexcorp.com and say that, okay, well, if I go to LumexCorp.com, can I design a kit over there? Well, it will take you to a, an area where you can say you're interested in, in a type of species also, and you can type in, you know, IL-6, uh, GLP, so forth, and you can filter out, hit search, and then it'll tell you all the company's kits that you may commonly find that interest of analyte um, in there. As I mentioned, there are tens of 20s of, of, of publications. There are, I mean, we, we go back since 98, 99, where there are a lot of uh, PubMed applications from, from cell to genes and development to science, cancer research, so forth. <clears throat> so you will find a lot of publications on our website, but also you can do your PubMed search and then find these on your own. We do offer Luminex training courses. Uh, while Artur has the, uh, will be running your assays, uh, if you have your own Luminex instrument, you can contact us and then we can work out something. Or more importantly, if you need to, if you end up, you know, leaving Purdue or Notre Dame and then you're going to end up joining some, some other company or another academic research account, you can come contact us and we can help connect with you. And then we also have a Luminex cookbook. Uh, I do not write this. This is about a hundred and something pages long. And I can, you know, Arthur, I, what I can do is I can email this to you. And if anyone asks you, I can, you know, feel free to share this. But this is 100 and something 30 pages long, and this is a recipe cookbook. So why would anyone want to do this? I would say that if you find that there's a target of interest that you are working on, whether it's an antibody or antigen or nucleic target that none of our partners offer, you can make your own assays and it's very cost effective. You could purchase the empty beads from us and you can either do one of three things. 
you can either make it yourself and you got a cookbook here what has a little bit of recipe in here to say that you incubate the beads with this buffer and with this antigen or nucleic target overnight so forth you can also buy those beads and then we can send a field scientist to come work with you on site or the third possibility is that we can make the beads for you. You say, you come talk to us, you say, I'm interested in these targets. Can you help design an assay for us? And then we'll send it back to you. And then we can send it back to you and then they can be run at the Mac core. And this is also just talking about assay development to say that you're not just limited to the four companies that I mentioned before that makes, uh, that has um, assays ready to go. We can make those assays for you. So I'm going to leave it right here with my contact information. Uh, you know, and again, feel free to jot this down, or you can talk to a tour um, if you want uh, to, to to ask more about what the core can do for you. But I think the first starting point is is that you know if we can find a way uh, for your assays to to be applied, let us help work with you. Um, don't don't assume that you are limited to what you are doing traditionally. Everything is a gold standard. Um, in, in, in all the current applications you're doing, but you will find that the applications are powerful uh, based on what type of data you can get out of it. So uh, let me go ahead and stop here. And if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer that or um, the Mac core can also answer some of these questions. I just had a, um, someone asked me recently about using Luminex te technology to assay blood spots. Do you have- Yeah, it's a great question. We, we can, that, Go on. Yeah, no, I didn't mean to cut you off, Christy, but yes, uh, I didn't mention it, but yes, DBS is one of those that uh, we can easily do. It is not a problem. There are a lot of papers of people who have done DBS extractions. Most notably, even there's some uh, popular diagnostic companies that actually collect DBS from patients and they extract it and they are doing Luminex applications. So to answer your question is yes, there are currently papers and I'll be happy to share it to you or we can get tech support to email you some papers about DBS extractions. Is it... Is it for particularly cytokines or hormones or is it something else? I don't really know. Okay. But there are there are common protocols, extraction protocols, but the answer is yes. So we can do DBS. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to see a couple publications if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. How much does it cost to make a customized bees antibody? Hong, is it, are you talking about from a company's kit or are you talking about the ones that are not available commercially? Okay, I'll, I'll, I can answer both because I'm not sure uh, for Hong's question. If it's a company's kit like Millipore or Luminex or Thermo Fisher or um, R&D systems, um, not available in commercial. Okay, I gotcha. Okay, so to answer your question, <laughs> if it's, um, uh, let me talk about the partner kits in general. And again, this is ballpark estimate. And then Hong, I'm gonna answer your question. If it's a, a partner commercialized kit, I would say we call it a rule of two. Right, so if you're doing two or less proteins, ELISAs are fine. If you're doing two or more proteins, then I would say, um, you know, multiplex is gonna be to your advantage from a cost perspective. What I mean by that is that the first protein target into a plate, we're talking about commercialized kits, by the way, the first target that goes into a plate is roughly around $550, give or take. And then for every target you're adding into that same plate, it's maybe an additional 150 to $175 per target. So. If you're doing a two-plex kit, it could be something like, you know, 675 to 700 bucks. If it's like eight, uh, three targets, it's like only 825 to 830 bucks, something so forth. So you see it starts to see an exponential. So I'll say two or more, that's where multiplexing is advantageous for multiplex kits uh, offered by partners. To answer your question, Hong, is how much cost to, to make a, come up, a customized bees antibody? It's even cheaper than that. Uh, it's very cost effective. So if you buy one ml of beads, one ml of bead region, it is roughly $750. And that is enough for seven to nine plates. So if you're doing nucleic targets, one ml of beads is roughly 350 bucks around. And that'll also last you around seven to nine plates. So the more bead regions you have, obviously you wanna take advantage of it, but it is very cost effective. So, so if you're saying here, we're thinking about 13 antibodies and it's not commercially available, I would say 13 times $750 and that'll be enough that'll last you about seven to nine plates worth, if that makes sense. I have a quick question about, um, you know, whether we should validate the 
a result um, because I mean, this may uh, have something to do with uh, what you mentioned, a product from different company might be different. I remember one time we had a, a mouse cytokine multiplex result. And then when, oh, I didn't personally do it, but other people, when they try to validate with uh, ELISA and they observe different result. And then recently we've done some um, phosphor protein Mm -hmm. And there was some interesting data, but uh, we were trying to, you know, I don't know if we need to confirm it was Western, which is a typical way we usually use to measure phosphoprotein. Yeah, Jian Yan, that's a, that's a great question. I will tell you that I have worked with, uh, oh, so let me let me go back on, on this. So I worked with researchers for 10 plus years. This is an everyday question. And when they submit papers to public, you know, for, for publications for review, there's always that one reviewer who says, great, you have all this Luminex multiplex data, but how do we know that this is real and this is not anything nonspecific or confirmed, right? So yes, odds are you're gonna always have to compare it to another technology. Um, I didn't show a slide today, but I do have it. Uh, someone who was working with AKT and mTOR and so they do, were doing heat shock proteins also, and but they, they were working with HeLa cells and so forth, doing treatments untreated, rapamycin and um, PF3 kinase inhibitors and so forth. And they were looking at um, uh, AKT mTOR signaling. And so they, they did all this Luminex data to show where, you know, um, phospho Essex kinase was going down and, and, and uh, phospho uh, AKT serin 473 was going down and so forth. And the review went back and said, prove it. How do we know this is real? And then so they did a side-by-side -side comparison of showing Western blots as one target at a time and said, look, we, we did this and here are the, the bands brighting up and all that stuff. And the paper got accepted. But here's the point that I wanted to answer your question is, a lot of the reviewers should have heard of Luminax, but they still are going to ask you about how, uh, if you can kind of prove it with a second type of uh, uh, technology, whether if it's IEHC or Western blots or flow cytometry, that's okay. That's a common question. When people are doing with ELISAs, you have to be very careful is that trends should be consistent from ELISAs to Luminex, but full changes, uh, sensitivities are different, right? Millipore, Biotechni, um, R&D systems, Thermo Fisher, Biorad, they offer high sensitivity kits. And you have to, I didn't talk about this, is that think about ELISAs. ELISAs have a very short standard curve range. And sometimes you have to sample diluted just to hopefully get captured within that range. And then if it's too strong, it's saturated. If it's too weak, it's, it's also on the bottom end. And it's, you get this very difficult um, values of, of comparing. On Luminex, it is also log scale. So you will find that it is flat and saturated on the top. It's linear in the middle and it's flat and saturated also on, on the top. So bottom and top saturated, linear in the middle. So to answer your question, I would say that it's not uncommon. You have to probably compare it. Validating, people do validate in some way, whether or not they have to do flow cytometry or Western blast just to get them um, their, their mind at peace. Uh, but you will, you will have to validate it just because it gives you some comfort. But once you do see that it is validated, especially when you're trying a company's kit, you don't have to keep validating it in the middle and at the end of the project. You know, it's just you have to be prepared in case the reviewer might ask about, did you compare it to Flow or Western, just in case. Thank you very much. That's very comfortable to know, very comforting to know that other people have validate their work. Thank you. I, I, I always say one thing is that you're going to spend a lot of money going through the kits and through the and you know, and the core works with you on the pricing on based on what they do for you. Um, you can talk to companies. I'm not going to speak on behalf of them. But you could talk to companies about discounts, about you want to try their kit out and you want to see if the kit works based on your experiments. One of if you take cell culture soup and you're doing LPS stimulations or if you're doing uh, drug treatment and so forth, because you know you don't want to start with doing 200 samples and you spend thousands of dollars in kits only to find out it doesn't work. It's not that the kits don't work; they all work. It's just a matter of do your sample are your samples initially detected. And so my kind of advice to researchers is, you know, if you're starting with a small kit or small subset of samples, get representative samples, get untreated, healthy donors, you know, controls, not, you know, uh, wild type mice or whatever it is, 
and they get representative positive samples and hopefully that you see big differences of numbers. If you're seeing that they're saying, it is nothing to do with the company's kits. The company's kits are validated and they have done, they've done a lot of beta testing. Is it more of a, you know, is it something to do with the antibody uh, epitope that's capturing against that? Is it, does that have to do with a nucleic target that is not binding right to the samples? So I, I won't speak on behalf of every company's kits, but I do have faith that all four companies kits work great. It's just a matter of, is it something to do with the samples? Um, I do want to mention one other thing regarding sample types. We did mention, you know, DBS, secreted fluid, so forth. One of the most difficult things to do is that you also have to ask yourself is what is in my sample before I get started, right? What are the inhibitory factors that could be a factor? If it works on Eliza's, odds are it's going to work great for luminex assays. If you do Western blots, um, homogenous and lysates work great. And what I mean by that, as long as it has a neutral pH, has a um, certain amount of salt, not too much, uh, the detergent is less than 0.5% final concentration, it'll be fine. If you are working with uh, cells, for example, understand that it does not work with physically whole cells. You will have to collect supernamed or homogenize it or some, or you're getting serum and plasma for it. It does not, you're not working with physically whole cells that you're taking whole cells and you're throwing it into the plate. Um, anything like organic solvents that you may have like acetic acids, you know, sulfuric acids, things like that, that may be present in your sample, that'd be a little more of a problem. Um, so if you have something that, that is heavy on that, I would say, be careful. I would probably say that you need to find a way to neutralize it, you know, before you get started. So Arthur, what would be the, um, what would be your advice that if you wanted just to mention about what would be the next steps? If, if maybe no one has any questions right now, do you want researchers to contact you or contact me? Maybe contact both of us at the same time. What would be your, what would be the plan of action for, for anyone who's attending today? Yeah. If there are any questions, uh, contact me at, uh, the email or search for the, the core website, which has uh, myself or Christy or um, the emails. You can contact any of us and we will be happy to discuss it. Um, and we, we get that a lot where people aren't really sure how to do it or what to do. So then we can talk about it or meet or have a Zoom to um, see how best to collect your samples, how to run, how many samples you can get. Um, and that, and then we can go from there. And if we, if we can do it, we we would then proceed to have you have the user buy the kit and then schedule the run, something like that. So, okay. I would say one other thing too that uh, I, I you know um, if there's a particular company's kits you are interested in, and you are communicating to that rep, please let the Mac core know about it. So they know about it because what they, we don't want to have is having two or three different side conversations. I would say, keep your conversations open where you do communicate with the Mac group, especially with Archer. So he's aware about it in advance. Uh, so he can also prepare his scheduling and also discuss certain protocols with, with him, uh, especially that we don't want to lose any, any time or any type of, there may be any misunderstandings. Yeah. And I would, I would say again, the contacting the reps is, is a very good idea early on because for some of these kits, uh, the sample preparation is very important or how you get the sample and how to resuspend it and um, process it. So definitely, and if you keep us in the loop, we have run a whole lot of different kits. So maybe there are some things that we can um, give you tips or tricks for. So. Any, any last minute questions before we are dismissed? Okay, well, I don't see anybody. I'd like to uh, thank Bobby again for giving this really nice presentation and for the, the Max Core for arranging it. Um, do you guys have any last words before we sign off? No, just thank you, Bobby, that you presented it so well and explained the technology. No, and I appreciate to the core, to the Mac core. I just want to mention one comment is don't hesitate to reach us out. You know, we are, um, we, we want to engage with you. And again, no question is a dumb question. We are not trying to um, force feed the technology on anybody, but I feel like if you have problems that you are going through with your current applications and 
do you think that XMAC technology can be a fit for you? Don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. We, this is you know, advice that we would give you. We would never force on anyone, but it has been around for 25 years and people have been awarded grant money from, their, from uh, budget proposals. People have an award, won awards for it. People have been promoted to different positions and people have, uh, who are grad students, postdocs have become principal investigators because of Luminex uh, based on the technology that took them from point A to point B. So let us be a way to help find research solutions for you, not to force feed you on something that you may or may not want. Thank you all. I really appreciate your time. Thank